So welcome to February. Yay! New month, new theme, deepening our faith. That's what the theme for February is, deepening our faith. And so today's talk is the substance of things hoped for. You recognize that, right? It's part of a Bible passage. The entire passage in Hebrews 1, uh, 11, 1 says this. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Well, that's as clear as mud. I mean, really, it's a little obscure, don't you think? I don't know. It, it, can, it can be a little difficult to understand. But if you continue reading down in Hebrews, it goes on to say this in Hebrews 11. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay, so that begins to explain a little bit more about this statement, that things from in the manifest universe have their origin in the unseen realm or the invisible realm. So in, uh, Ernest Holmes, who was the founder of our faith tradition, said this in uh, Freedom to Live. He said, possibly the greatest adventure one can embark on is the self-discovery that there is a relationship between thought and experience between thought and success, between thought and joyous living. The things which do appear in one's life have their origin in the unseen. It is from the intangible realm of thought that there comes the substance of things hoped for. So now we understand even better what the passage is saying to us on a personal level. Worlds are framed by the word of God. Our world is framed by our word. Everything proceeds from the invisible to the visible realm. Now, Ernest Holmes, who is our founder, gave this talk. Um, he, gave, he had a radio show, first of all, in, in the 40s and 50s. And he gave this, it, it was called this thing called life. And he gave this radio talk in which he referred to this very Bible passage we're talking about. And I should just stand up here and just read you what he, <laughs> what he said in that radio show because it was so fabulous. It was like mind-blowing stuff. But anyway, I'm just going to give you a little piece of what he said. He said, the Bible says that faith is the evidence of things not seen and the substance of things hoped for. Here it refers to faith as being both evidence and substance. Faith, which at first seems so intangible, actually deals with a substance which, acting in accordance with the law, projects an evidence of itself into our experience. Ah, oh, that's amazing. That's just, you know, incredible. Faith is both evidence and substance. And that's an important concept for us in religious science. He goes on to say, well, no, he's saying the same thing again. Faith which seems so intangible, so intangible. But it actually is substance and it actually is evidence. So we can see why that's so important in our lives. <sighs> that faith is so important in our lives. It is more than an intangible, fuzzy concept. It is actual substance and evidence. It produces real changes in our lives. It produces evidence in our physical lives. Ernest Holmes went on to say this. He said, faith is the, faith is the affirmation of our belief. Faith is the affirmation of our belief. And yet, it has to be more than that, doesn't it? I mean, if you think about it, it must be a recognition. First, it must be a recognition that this power we're talking about actually exists. And that's the first step of our affirmative prayer. You heard Nan give that lovely, lovely prayer before. The first step in our affirmative prayer is the recognition that spirit exists. The recognition that there is a power and presence in the, in the universe and that we can use it in response to our thoughts. That's step one. This power actually exists. And... We have to have that complete acceptance, the realization that this power, when set in motion by our belief in it, produces tangible effects. 
That is our realization step. That's step three in our affirmative prayer, to make it real for ourselves. And that's faith. That is that active, powerful force which creates. So let's go back and look at the original statement. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we've defined faith as both evidence and substance. We have further defined faith as the affirmation of our belief and the power which sets the law in motion. So now let's talk about that little tiny word <laughs> in the statement, hope. Eh, not very inspiring. It's not very inspiring to me. I don't know. It's hope. Huh, hope. Okay. Now, look, it, it beats the hell out of hopeless, you know. I mean, <laughs> it's better than that. But really, what do we mean when we say hope? Hope for? What do we mean? How does that fit in in our spiritual philosophy? Really? You know, Ernest Holmes, it, again, I, I go back to that talk he did. It was amazing. But he said, the Bible clearly states the whole physical universe is a result of the word of God or the thought of God. The whole physical universe is an outpicturing of the thought of God. Moses said, the creative word is in our own mouth and that we should know it and do it. That's powerful stuff. The, uh, our word. It's in our mouth, and we should say it and do it. The creative word is in our mouth. Jesus said it is done unto us as we believe. Two of the most profound statements in the whole Bible, if that's the only thing that the Bible had was just those two sentences, it'd still be worth the price of admission right there. <laughs> Somehow, and Ernest Holmes said this, somehow or the other, we have overlooked or not quite comprehended their meaning, the meaning of those two statements. We haven't taken them literally enough. They have been used as sort of symbols for hope rather than a realization of a, an actual spiritual presence and a spiritual law so close to us that it flows through our thinking which is so present everywhere, it creates and governs all things. That is powerful, that is palpable, that is presence that is within us. God speaks its word, we speak our word. It's the same thing, Mac macrocosm, microcosm. But for us, hope has got to just be a step in the process. Hope is what you've got when you're not convinced you know. Hope should not be a place where we stay and rest. It must be a stepping stone to spiritual realization, to spiritual conviction. That's deepening our faith. That's what it means to deepen our faith. Hope is a step along the way, but it will not make itself manifest in the body of our affairs until we go further, until we go into, into acceptance of spiritual realization. That spiritual principle is working through us in the world. And we need that acceptance. You know, there are lots and lots of um, teachings about, about vibrations, you know, about how we, uh, we vibrate at different levels of energy, uh, different emotional scales. And, you know, when you look at all of them, um, hope is somewhere in there. <laughs> it's never at the top, but it's, it's somewhere in them, you know. Um, it's always, always a step in the process. If we look at the the writings of um, David, what's his name? Dr. David Hawken. Hawkins. Hawkins, right. Okay, so he has an emotional vibrational scale. I think it goes from one to a thousand. One to a thousand, I think. Where one is, you know, shame and guilt and grief. And, and a th uh, up at the top end, there's joy and freedom and love and enlightenment. I think it's like up there near or at a thousand. Okay, so, so when you look at the scale that he created, this linear scale, hope is somewhere around the 300 or 400 level. It's great, it's above, you know, shame and guilt and grief, but it's certainly not where we want to stay, you know? It's a, it's a place we want to move through. We want to move beyond just hoping things will get better in our lives. We have to get to that place of spiritual conviction. <clears throat> the Abraham work of Esther and Jerry Hicks, I think they have the same thing. They have an emotional, vibrational scale that goes from one to a hundred, if I'm not 
mistaken or something like that. And they have the same thing. They have the low end of the, the, low end of the scale, which is grief and depression and, and fear. And at the high end of the scale, there's joy and freedom and love. And hope is in there, again, somewhere along the way. But it's not the place we want to stay. You know, we don't want to stay in hope. We can't just stay hoping things will, will turn out in our lives or hoping things will get better. Again, I mean, it, it's better than, than grief and despair, but it's still not spiritual conviction. We have to rely on the truth of this teaching. We can't hope stuff works out. We have to test it. And that's what Ernest Holmes said. We have to test it. We have to prove to ourselves that it works. We must come to rely on this presence and power in our lives working through us and as us in the world as a spiritual principle, just as sure as we know gravity works around us and through us. I mean, you know, it just, we don't, we don't think. It's like, <laughs> if I let go of this, is there anybody in the room that's going to wonder whether or not gravity will take over? Do we wonder, gee, maybe it'll just float out there this time. Maybe gravity won't work this time. Maybe gravity works for you, but it doesn't work for me. We know without a shadow of a doubt, I let go of this, it's going to fall to the floor. I'm not going to do it because it's too loud. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you need me to prove it, I will. The fact is, we don't wonder whether or not gravity is going to work. We know it. It's a principle. And this is how we have to move forward in our, in our faith belief also. Hope is great. And it's better than hopeless. But it's somewhere in the scale towards spiritual realization. We can't stop at hope. We have to know this stuff works. We have to use it. We have to experiment with it. We have to prove to ourselves that these principles work by stating our spiritual conviction instead of just hoping. That's deepening our faith. That's the faith as substance and evidence will then be the result. Evidence will then be the result. Does that make sense? When we use faith as substance, as actual tangible substance, then evidence will be the result. Something will, will actually change in our lives. Going back, to that, uh, going back to that talk that Ernest Holmes gave, I swear. You know, there is a, there is a, um, on, on line, there is www, uh, hmm, used to be called, is it Spiritual Living, right? Spirituallivingarchives.org. All of these talks he gave, all of these radio shows, most of them are up in print. Some of them are actual recorded radio shows from the, from the 40s and 50s. You can listen to Dr. Holmes give these talks. It's just amazing. It'll just change your life. Anyway, this is that same one that I was referred to before from 43. It said, and so let's learn to have faith. And having it, let's learn to use it. And using it, let's expect results. If we were depending only on our own individual will or our own little self-determination or our own little ego, we wouldn't expect very much. But this is exactly what we are not depending on. We are depending on a power greater than we are, a presence which fills all space and creates everything and which is at the center of everyone's being. We are calling on a power of God in human affairs. We are, we, are, we are demanding the divine maker of all things to remold our lives. Peace can come out of confusion. Joy can come out of sorrow. But if we are to give our consent, the divine spirit can and will govern human affairs. And that's what we're talking about. Surrendering to this power and presence that is active in our lives always. We've never been alone. We've never been without this presence. It is the very seed of perfection that is nestled within each and every one of us. It is that power that we call upon. It's not our little selves. It's our greater self. It's the truth of us. It is our higher self. It is that God self within each and every human that has made itself manifest as you to begin with. You wouldn't even exist if spirit didn't have your, the idea of you and create it. So it's spiritual conviction. That's where we're moving to. And this teaching is a teaching of spiritual conviction. 
But when we come to it, we have to start. Maybe we have to start in hope. Maybe that's a great starting point. We have to start thinking, well, maybe it'll work. So, so test the principles, try the principles, work affirmations, work affirmative prayer, do the, do the meditations and do the affirmations and, and demand from the universe an actual physical proof, you know, and start where, we start where we are. And if that means I'm going to manifest a butterfly today, <laughs> then do that. But prove that the principles work. And that's what builds our faith. It's like a muscle. Our faith is like a muscle. If we don't prove it and stretch it and then, and then manifest something else and then manifest something else, if we don't continue to pr try it and prove it, we will never move from hope to spiritual conviction, to spiritual knowledge, to spiritual commitment in, in this teaching. So we start where we are and then we create more. We build on that. It's like going to the gym, right? If you want to build your physical muscles, your physical body, you know, everybody's going to the gym, right? Because it was January. Isn't that when everybody re-signs up to the gym? Is it, oh, come on. That's, that's your resolution, isn't it? I'm going to go to the gym more. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to, well, whatever. So you don't just go to the gym once and go, well, pff, good, glad that's over. <laughs> you know, I've done that. Okay, good. Now what else? No, you go every day or you go three times a week or whatever. If you're making a commitment to build a, a better body, to make your body healthier or leaner or stronger or whatever, you don't just go once and go, Phew, thank God that's over with. <laughs> you have to go back to the gym. And go back and go back and go back and go back until you see results. Same thing with building your faith. It's the same thing. You have to keep going back and going back and going back. And you start seeing results. And then you see little results. And then you see bigger results. That's what deepening in our faith is. To turn from hoping things will work out to knowing they are working out. And we may not even see changes on the physical level. We may not see nothing change at all in the physical realm. And yet we hold firm to the conviction, to the spiritual conviction that things are changing in my life right now. Right now, God has a greater life for me. And even if we don't see that evidence immediately, the spiritual conviction knows that it's coming. And that's deepening our faith. And that is the evidence of things, seen or unseen or whatever, that, that everything proceeds from the unseen realm to the physical realm, to the seen, through our faith in it. And as we grow our faith, as we grow our faith, these demonstrations reflect that. The demonstrations reflect that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is an actual substance. And I would change the word hope. Let's just change that in our minds. We get to rewrite things. <laughs> We're religious science. <laughs> Faith is the substance of things known. Known. This is our spiritual conviction. Faith is the substance of our things known and the evidence of things unseen. Everything in our life proceeds from the unseen realm to the seen. Everything in our life proceeds from the thought. Everything in our life proceeds from the word of God, the word of us, into form in our lives. This is why Ernest Holmes always said, change your thinking, change your life. Change your thinking, change your life. We must move from spiritually hoping things will happen to spiritual commitment in a spiritual principle that is, and that is us, and that is in us, and that surrounds us, and that we can call upon and, and, and claim and change the conditions in our lives. That's, that's faith, which is the substance of things known <laughs> the evidence of things not seen. And so this week, that's what we're going to do. We're going to move out of hope and we're going we're gonna to walk into spiritual commitment. 
spiritual realization that this is not something we just talk about on Sundays, okay? That this is a power and a presence in our lives that is palpable, that is, exists, that we can feel, that we can know, that we can commune with, that we can use, like Ernest Holmes said, we can use. And it changes the conditions in our lives. So this week, let's do that together, shall we? Let's move from hope into spiritual realization. And know, know, know that our good is our God. And our God is our good. And it is expressing right here, right now, through us, as us into the world. Are you with me? Yeah. Thank you so much.